Hi everyone, Vacha here for RecordingStudio9.com and thanks for joining me again today. And today, after numerous requests, we are discussing in more detail patch bays, what they are and how do they work and all the different modes that patch bays operate in. To demonstrate this, I will be talking about all the different modes so you have a better understanding of the settings. I will be also physically connecting an audio interface and outboard gear as a compressor showing you all the connections and how do they go and all in different modes. I will also give you a full demonstration slideshow of a complete setup of a home studio using an audio interface, multiple uh, outboard gear and the speakers and everything else that go into the patch bay so you have a complete understanding of how patch bays work. Since this video is going to be a long one because there's a lot of detail in there, I hope you stay with me throughout this video. So please stay with me. So without any further ado, let's get on with it. This presentation is a quick guide to setting up the Behringer PX3000 patch bay with Behringer Firepower FCA1616 USB Firewire audio interface. We're going to learn and understand about different modes of patch bay connections. We're going to set up an effective workflow layout for basic home studio use. I'm going to show you how to connect musical instruments. And also, we're going to have a look at the patch bay having quick access to artboard gears, like compressors, EQ and effects. We're going to make the use of eight available channel inserts of the FCA1616, the four line level inputs, and the eight available outputs. We're also going to connect our studio monitor speakers, and headphone amplifiers. And finally, I'm going to show you a quick guide of your patch bay matrix. Here are the list of products used in this presentation. The Behringer Ultra Patch Pro PX3000, Behringer Firepower FCA1616 audio interface, various synth images, various effect rack gear images, some microphone and musical instrument images, and also an image of a typical studio speakers. The equipment are for presentation only. Each setup will vary according to the requirement, equipment and instruments used, as well as audio interface capability and options. To understand what a patch bay is and how it works, here is a patch bay and a couple of audio gears. Then we use leads to connect each instrument to the patch bay, and then we use patch leads to interconnect the gears to and from each other. Let's learn about patch bay modes. A normal mode. This is the most common mode for a patch bay. The rear A connection connects to the rear B and any lead connected to the front A disconnects rear A from rear B and signal out to front A. Patch lead to the front B disconnects the rear A from rear B and signal in to rear B. Patch leads to both front and A and B disconnect rear A from rear B and pass through signal respectively. Here is a quick example. The line outputs of the synth connected to inputs of the audio interface without patch leads. The audio signal from the output of the synth is connected to the rear A 9 and 10. And since rear A 9 and 10 are connected to the rear B 9 and 10 respectively, they just pass on the signal to the input of the audio interface. The half normal mode. Not very common, but quite useful. The rear A connection connects to rear B. The patch lead to front A does not disconnect rear A from rear B, plus splits the signal out to front A. Patch lead to front B disconnects rear A from rear B and signal in to rear B, similar to normal mode. Patch lead to both front A and B disconnects rear A from rear B and pass through signal respectively. Although not common, but here's an example how we can use half normal patch boy mode. The signal from synth at A9 and A10 still flow to B9 and B10 and to the audio interface channel 5 and 6 respectively. Now if we use patch leads from A9 and A10 at the front with split signal, if we assume 
and if X output gear is connected to 13 and 14 respectively, and if we use batch leads from A9 and A10 to split the signal to the effects unit at B13 and B14, the output of the effects gear at A13 and A14 patch to B11 and B12, we feed the affected signal into the audio interfaces channel 7 and 8. So now, not only we have the original signal from the synthesizer going to channels 5 and 6 of the audio interface, we have affected and change signal feeding into channel 7 and 8. We will look at this example in depth a bit later on. And finally, the true mode. In true mode, rear A connection never connects to rear B. And a patch lead to front A connects rear A signal out to front A. And patch lead to front B connects front B and signal in to rear B. Patch leads to both front A and B pass through signal respectively. This is a great mode for things like CD players or powered speakers that can be connected to the patch bay. Effect upward gears inputs and outputs can be connected using the true mode. However, you must note that in true mode never patch A to B as this may damage your gear, connecting the output signal back to the input of the same audio gear. Here is an example of a true mode where we have speakers and a CD player and we can use a patch bay to the output of the CD player from A19 and 20 can be fed into the input of 21 and 22 which are input signal of the speakers. Let's configure the patch bay. This patch bay configuration is directed to connect the FCA1616 audio interface. If you have a different audio interface, your configuration may not be the same. So let's set up normal or half normal for bays 1 to 12 and normal for 21 to 24. Next, let's set up true mode for bays 13 to 20. Now that we have our patch bay modes selected correctly, let's start connecting them all up. The Behringer FCA1616 does come with 8 inserts for 8 of its input channels. If your audio interface does not support insert, then you may skip this step. You will require up to 8 insert patch leads. These patch leads have TRS jack plug on one end with tip and ring and sleeve and extended to 2 mono jacks with tip and sleeve. For each one of the inserts, we plug in the TRS connection at the back of the FCA1616 insert channels, and then the input and the output to A and B of the patch bay. Then we connect the second one, the third one, and so on. To connect our line inputs, we will require 8 or up to 12 TRS balance leads. This will be connected to the B9 to B12 and to the inputs 5, 6, 7 and 8 at the back of the FCA1616 as shown in the diagram. Next, we connect our main output of the FCA1616 to A21 and A22 of the patch bay. We may also wish to connect 3 and 4 left and right auxiliary outputs to A23 and A24 of the patch bay. This is useful for headphone amplifier feed. Here is an example using the Focusrite 18i20. The Focusrite 18i20 does not support any inserts, so we actually connect all the inputs and the outputs at the back of the patch bay respectively, as shown as an example in our diagram. Now that we have our patch bay connected, let's find out how we can plug some gear. So patch bay 1 to 8 are our inserts from our Firepower FCA1616. Patch bay 9 to 12 are our line inputs to 
our FCA 1616. And as in this example, you can see we can plug synthesizers, drum machines, or any line level output. Our patch bay 13 to 20 has been configured stereo effect units. This could be dual channel compressors, reverbs, delays, and so on. So here is an example of how we can patch in some effects. As you can see, the output of the channel 1 insert, A1, is fed into B13, the input of an effects rack. The signal is processed by the effects unit, and the output is sent at A13. And with the patch lead, A13 is fed back into the insert point of B1, feeding it back to Firepower FCA 1616 channel 1. So the signal from the microphone will go out of A1 into the effects processor, get processed, output from A13, back to B1, and then sent to our PC. And finally, our output section, 21 to 24. Here, the outputs of the FCA 1616 is connected to a pair of speakers or headphone amplifiers. If you only have one or two output processing gear, then you can use the extra output of the FCA1616, remembering that the FCA1616 does have eight outputs, you can assign them to the patch bay. This is an alternative way of setting it up. Here is a blank patch bay matrix that you can use to fill up the information you need to remember where everything is connected. And here is an example of a patch bay with all the connections layered out correctly.